Hi everybody, it's Susan from Sunrise Quilt Studio and today I'm going to do a voiceover because I didn't realize the battery was dead on my microphone. But this is the butterfly quilt. This is one of the two that I made and I've got it laying out on my cutting table and I have it layered with my backing and my batting and there is my little basket of safety pins. So I'm going to pin all three layers together and um, then do the quilting. Now the batting I'm using is 100% cotton and it I bought a um, piece that's big enough for a full-size quilt but um, it's big enough that I can cut it in half and have both quilts taken care of that way. So it's a, a nice batting. It doesn't um, it clings to the fabric so that it won't shift while I'm quilting, which is really important to me. Now the backing that I chose is not from the same fabric line. Most of these fabrics in the top are from Lori Holt, and this fabric is not. It is a Quilter's Choice fabric that I bought at Joann's, and uh, I just found some that were close to the colors in the quilt, and you can see that pink looks pretty good. Now the yellow is a little bit bright, but it was a companion to the pink piece and I think it'll look good with the quilt. It's just going to be on the back. It's not on the front so it doesn't have to really compete with the fabrics that are on the front. I had decided or I had debated on whether to um, just put that aside and find a different fabric but I think I'm going to go ahead and use that one. Anyway so it it goes with the uh, that pink fabric really well so um, I think those fabrics are cute they have little daisies on them and the center of the daisies have little smiley faces on them so I thought that would be cute for a couple of little girl quilts now the piece of fabric that I bought was just 45 inches wide but the quilt is 42 inches wide so that leaves me about an inch and a half to two inches on each side of the quilt and so I just kind of centered it on there and um, I've got enough fabric on all four sides now to do the quilting since I don't have to load this on a long arm I don't need extra a lot of extra fabric on the edges I still want some but I don't need as much as I would on the long arm uh, right here I'm sorting through all of my safety pins now I know I have more safety pins than this but they're evidently in storage. These are the ones that I had available. And some of them are a medium sized pin and then some are smaller. And I wound up using all of the pins that I had in that little container. I was sorting them out and just pulling out the longer pins and decided that um, I just toss those little small ones back in the little container there and not use them. But I wound up needing to use them anyway. And what I'm going to do is try and pin about every four inches on this quilt top. And I think that's pretty basic when you do pin. Now there's other ways to layer these when you're sewing or quilting them on a domestic machine or hand quilting them. You can um, pin them, you can tack them um, with those little plastic tacks. You can hand baste it together. You can buy fusible batting and fuse the three layers together so you have quite a few options there on how you can do this um, you can um, put it in a hoop to hand quilt it or you can hand quilt it without a hoop and I'm going to quilt it on my Singer 1590 so it's going to go through the sewing machine and one of the reasons I like the cotton batting is because you know it will cling to the fabric and it won't shift whereas polyester it doesn't cling to the fabric and you have greater chance of your fabric shifting whether you're um, hand quilting or if you're machine quilting on a long arm or a domestic machine it'll shift want to shift on you sometimes you have to do things to keep it from doing that like hand basting it or pinning it down even when you're working on long arm. So I'm starting in the middle of the quilt and I'm working my way out uh, putting those pins in and I am closing the pins because um, 
there's going to be a lot of pins in there. And if I leave them open, chances are I'm going to wind up sticking myself more than once while I'm quilting. So I do close those pins and I'm just doing it by hand. There are little tools that you can buy to help you close your safety pins. Um, I don't happen to own one, so I'm just uh, using my hands to close those pins. And just starting in the center and working my way out. And I'm not using a grid. I'm just kind of estimating how far apart I need to go on these. And then as I am quilting on the machine, then I'll take those pins out one at a time so that I don't run over them. Okay, so now I'm getting ready to start the quilting here. And I have the quilt all pinned. All the layers are pinned together and I'm going to just pick a place to start and um, get started with the quilting. Now what I'm going to do is cross hatch. So here you can see I have a couple of lines of quilting already done and um, just kind of get my feet wet and I help and I kind of adjust it, use those lines to help me adjust the stitch length that I needed for the quilt. So um, I didn't want a really tight quilt stitch on there. Um, so I've lengthened that quite a bit. I'm, it's about 10 stitches per inch as opposed to when I'm piecing, uh, I do like 12 to 15 stitches per inch. So I'm using that ruler there. And what I have in my hand is a chalk marker and it uses chalk powder and it has a little aluminum wheel on the end and it's made by clover and i've had this for about 15 years so i have no idea if it's still on the market at this point but it's um it's easy to use you just uh, run it wherever you want your mark and it just leaves a little trail of chalk and it's a pretty fine um, line of chalk and it'll brush off real easily. Now there's other ways you can mark your quilt. You can use air soluble markers and water soluble markers. You can use a sliver of soap. You can use uh, friction pens. Um, there's pros and cons with each one of those methods. So use whatever you're comfortable with. The only thing I have not tried is the friction pens. Um, I do know of quilters who use them and they like them, but I've also known a quilter who used them on her quilt. She marked her entire top and then she put it in her car in the winter to bring to a quilt meeting. And when she took it out, every single one of those lines had shown back up. So that's an instance where she has to, had to iron it again to get rid of the lines. So it's not a real big deal. It's just think, something you have to keep in mind is that those marks, um, when you iron them to get rid of them, they're actually still there. They will come back if you uh, have your quilt in a cold situation. Um, Water-soluble markers, of course, those will wash out. Um, Air-soluble markers, they disappear after an hour or so uh, depending on how new your marker is. Um, and those, what I like to do with those when I use them is I still will wash them out. I don't rely on the the air for it to disappear. I think it's probably still in the quilt, so it's best to just probably wash those. So anyway, I'm using this ruler and using my chalk, mar chalk marker, and I'm using the 45-degree line on that ruler lining it up with the the seam there in the border and then i'm marking my quilt now the chalk i have in there is white so it doesn't show up very well on the white fabric but it does show up on the darker fabrics and it there's enough um places that are marked that i can go f use it kind of like point to point and and i'm just using a straight stitch and I'm using my walking foot on my sewing machine so it's easier to keep a straight line there. So um, I think I'm, what I'm looking for is another marker here to show you so I can tell I'm standing up digging around in my little pencil container there, my, my tool containers looking for other markers. 
Now another thing you can use is a harem marker and what I have here is a point turner but it can work as a harem marker and you can mark your quilt with that and what it leaves is a little indention in your fabric so you can follow it that way. Um, here's another point turner. This one's a bamboo one. And I do have a hair marker somewhere, but I wasn't able to find it. But you can use something like that to also mark your quilting lines on your quilt. Okay, so now I'm going to get ready to do some more quilting. So I have all of my pins in there, and I'm just putting it under my walking foot on my sewing machine. And I'm just going to follow the lines that I have marked. And... For this quilt, what I'm doing is I'm sewing all of the quilting lines that run the same direction. So I'm not going um, all the way around the quilt. I'm just going from one edge to the opposite edge. So all of these lines will be the same. So I'll go to the end and then pull the quilt back and start again. So you'll get the idea of that. I'm not explaining it very well, but you'll see that here. And now I'm messing with the thread here. Evidently my needle became unthreaded. So we're going to re-thread it and start over again. And I'm adjusting the stitch length looks like too. Now it took me about three sessions to finish quilting this quilt. The first night, um, which is what I'm filming here, I got about half of the first side of the quilt done. Um, meaning all the lines that are going one direction. I got half of those done, so half of the quilt. And then the next night, I finished that up. The third night, I turned the quilt to do the lines that go perpendicular. And I did all of those in one session. That went faster that way because of um, not having to remove pins as I, as I go. Now I'm trying to let the machine just carry the quilt through. I'm not pushing it. I'm just kind of guiding it to keep it on the lines that I have marked. And I'm going fairly slow right now. Now one thing about uh, sewing or quilting on a domestic machine is that the weight of the quilt uh, can kind of slow things down. It puts drag on the quilt and it's harder to move it. So that's why you will see some people will like kind of throw the quilt over their shoulder because that lifts the quilt up and it you have you don't have gravity working against you that way. Whereas right now most of that quilt is sitting in my lap and so there's gravity pulling against the top and it, it's a little bit harder to get it through the machine. But you notice this machine that I've got, it's got a decent harp space in it. So I don't have to fight to get it through the machine in that respect. There's, there's quite a bit of room between the needle and the base of the sewing machine, which is really helpful. Now, if I had tried my um, other machine, the one that is still broken, my Singer patchwork, that has about four, maybe four to six inches of space in that harp and it's, it's that's not a lot and the height of it also isn't very high so it's it's hard to do much of a project in there I mean in, you can do small projects like a placemat or potholder or you know a tabletop or a small one but uh, doing a full-size quilt I don't know that you could do it on that machine now I am marking the uh, border again here and I do that with each line that I quilt. Instead of marking the whole quilt at one time, I'm doing it with each line. And you can mark your whole quilt before you get started. Uh, you don't have to do it this way, of course. Um, it's just what I thought was going to work best for, for me in this quilt right now. Now on the other quilt, when I get to quilting that, I may go ahead and mark the entire top. Um, one, I think I'll probably use a different marker too instead of using the chalk. For one thing, you know, chalk will brush off and you could lose those lines as you're quilting. And uh, But if I use something like a water-soluble marker, they'll, be, they'll stay on there until I wash them out. Now, air-soluble marker, 
that will also disappear over time. So if I don't get it done all in one session and within a couple of hours, those lines will disappear and I'll have to mark it again. So a lot depends on what kind of a marker you use. Now in this section, I'm still quilting in the same area, still doing it in the same direction, but I'm closer to the middle of the quilt now. So I'm going to have to start rolling it up so that I can get it through the harp space. And you will see here that I just kind of did a quick little flip right there and just rolled it up. I didn't uh, do anything special with it. I don't have it tied up with a, um, a clamp or anything. I just rolled it and held it in my hand. And I'm just guiding it through, letting it, the machine do the work and uh, just guiding it so that I stay on the lines that I have marked. And another tip on this is just take your time. Uh, try not to speed through it because um, your quilt's going to fight against you with all of the bulk that you're dealing with and the weight of it. And it, you might not get the results that you're looking for if you try and go too fast. Now this took quite a bit longer than it would have if I did this on the long arm. I, it, I probably could have gotten it done in an hour or two as opposed to three sessions of about two to three hours a piece. But um, it is possible to do it on your domestic machine. It just takes practice and um, and just you know taking your time, being patient with yourself and with your machine and uh, trying to enjoy the process as you're going through it. Here's some more of the quilting where I've got the quilt wound or fold rolled up there on um, the right side of the machine. And you can see some of my safety pins, they're not in the way, so I'm just leaving them where they are and just taking my time and quilting through. Now you also see in part of this where I'll get to a point where I'll, I will where I will stop and do some marking on the quilt. Those butterfly blocks don't have any landmarks on them for me to use like the nine patch block does here. I'm just going from point to point on those blocks and I can eyeball those and don't really need to mark those. But when I get over to the butterfly blocks, there's nothing there for me to follow. So you can see here, I'm lining it up with the needle and the space between those two lines is one and three eighths of an inch of between the quilting lines. So I know that if I measure out one and three eighths inch from the line that I just quilted, that I've got everything lined up parallel. So everything should be in good order especially when I can use the points of the blocks in the nine patch block to uh, help guide me on that. So you will find uh, ways that uh, will help you get through a quilt when you're quilting it if you're doing a geometric pattern like this, like a, a cross hatch. Um, and you can practice on smaller pieces of scrap fabric and um, you know, get the feel for the pattern and decide if that's something that is going to work well with the quilt you're working on before you actually get to quilting on the actual quilt top. Now I've switched my marking tool. This is actually a chalk pencil and I'm using that instead of the uh, clover chalk marker. This one is giving me a little bit uh, thicker lines so I can see them a little bit better. I think it's getting kind of late at night here in the lighting. I don't have natural lighting coming through the window anymore so it's getting a little bit harder to see and my eyes are getting tired so um, I switched markers. So which is another point you can use more than one marker in your quilt. Just use whatever is going to work for you. And uh, this was working well. Now the marks in the quilt from the chalk markers. Um, some of those will brush out. Um, another way to get them out is to use uh, a vacuum cleaner and use your 
upholstery attachment on there. You might want to put a uh, piece of nylon over it, a piece of nylon hose um, to kind of protect your quilt from any dirt that may be on the brush attachment of your your vacuum and you can br uh, vacuum them out and then you can also just wash your quilt and you can wash it by hand or you can throw it in the uh, washing machine and right here I am marking a section right here that I it's on the butterfly wing here that I wanted to make sure I was going in the right direction now this is what another white chalk marker and in the light of my machine, my sh machine has kind of a yellow tinted light. It actually looked gray, but it was white chalk. So, um, anyway, either way I could see it. So it worked fine. And then here I am going just point to point on the piecing of the nine patch chain block. Well, here is the quilt. It's all quilted now. I still have to get the get it trimmed and get the binding on it. But here we go. So it is. It's all quilted. Um, I think it turned out really well, and I'm really happy with it. Um, I'm really glad I did the cross hatch on it. I think that was the easiest thing for me to do because I am not accomplished at quilting on my domestic machine, other than doing straight line quilting so I think it looks well I think it looks good um, I did a diagonal cross hatch instead of a, you know a squared off one so it's going diagonal on the quilt and I do have chalk marks on it um, I don't know if you can see them but you can see a little bit here and I'm going to try and vacuum those out. If they don't come out, I'll just go ahead and wash the quilt because I don't want to give a quilt to a, a baby that has chalk in it. It would not be good for them to breathe that in. So I'll probably wash that. I think that'd be the safest thing to do. Um, I still have the other quilt top to go. And let me see. Well, let me show you the back of this one. Here we go. You can see the quilting really, really good from this angle. So I think it looked out, it looked really, I think it looks really good. I'm really happy with the way it turned out. And um, I just used my all-purpose thread for quilting it. I didn't use anything special. All of my long arm thread is in storage right now. So I could have used that too. I've done that quite a bit on projects. Just use my long arm thread on my domestic machine. But um, that is in storage at the moment so the cotton batting is really nice it's not too stretchy it's um, you know got a thin profile so um, it won't be too heavy and it'll hold up really well with lots of washings so um, I'll pull out the other quilt for you so you can see that it's not quilted yet Here it is. So I'll just, I'll pull it so you can see it. You can't see it all at one time because I just don't have the space. But this is the one with the green border and the yellow and the nine patch blocks. So this is the green and yellow one. Has a big red and blue butterfly in the middle. And there's the other butterflies there. So I think that's really cute. And I um, think I am going to go ahead and use this yellow backing. I kind of debated on that because it doesn't match the yellows in here. These yellows are more golden yellow as opposed to this bright yellow. But it will be on the back of the quilt. And so it's not really going to compete with the front. So I think that'll be okay. Though I do have to go run to the store and get a couple of markers. I'm going to use a water soluble or an air soluble marker I think on this quilt. I think it will be a little bit faster. I'm going to go ahead and mark this before I start quilting it and um, I think that will speed things up especially when I'm actually at the machine and quilting. 
So um, I need to get that because I need to mark these butterfly blocks and that's basically all I need to mark. I don't need to mark these because I got landmarks to follow the going from point to point. But I do need these to line the the butterfly blocks to line up with these marks but I can do that with a long ruler and mark the butterfly blocks and mark the borders so because there's no no landmarks on the borders either so I'll need to mark those. I have about a month to get these quilts done so um, I'm really doing good on the timing right now but um, it'd be real easy to get distracted. We are seeing our meeting with our builder on Saturday morning so it's in two days and he's going to meet us at our property and we're going to go walk the property and uh, go over the plans and um, gives gives him more information to give us an estimate so um, at the moment I think he can still get us in early this summer uh, but a lot's going to depend on how he feels about the property and what's going to need to be done because I'm sure there's some um, dirt work that needs to be done in order to get the semis in to get the logs in and that kind of thing so and we need a month to get the financing set up so uh, all of it takes time but if we want to get it done this summer things need to start moving now which they are which is really good so fingers crossed everything goes well on Saturday and we can get get ahead and get moving within the next couple of weeks so that's where we are on the house so that's just a little update life update for you so anyway baby quilts are almost done I have to do the quilting on the second one I got to do binding on both and then I need to clean them so they'll be ready I can get them all gift wrapped and they're all ready for whenever the baby shower is I'm not it's in April but I don't have the date yet uh, my niece hasn't she's gonna let me know when it, they get the date set um, and then I have a long list of blocks to show you so hopefully we'll get to those through the year um, but I'm going to get started on those so the next video should be another block video for you so anyway I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did please click that like button don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and click that notification bell so you'll be notified when the next video comes up and in the meantime, I hope you're all staying safe and healthy, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. For more quilting ideas, click on the video links. And to keep up with my latest projects, click on the subscribe button. I hope to see you again soon.